Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the St. Thomas Alumni Relations webinar series. My name is Jenna Johnson, and I'm a program manager in the Alumni Relations Office. The webinar will last approximately 30 minutes. The last five minutes of the webinar will be used as a questions and answer session with Dean Weinkoff. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to today's speaker, Dean Weinkoff. Since 2008, Dr. Don Weinkoff has served as the Dean of Engineering at the University of St. Thomas. From 1996 to 2008, Dr. Weinkoff was Professor of Chemical Engineering at New Mexico Tech in Socorro, New Mexico. He has been honored nationally for his teaching and research as Henry Dreyfus Teacher Scholar. Prior to his career in academia, Dr. Weinkoff worked at Shell Oil Company as a research engineer. He has also worked as a foreign scholar for the Mexican government, CONACYT. He is the author of over 40 books and um, book chapters. His research in polymer materials and plastics processing has been cited over 1,000 times in literature. He is the inventor on three U.S. patents and has been the principal investigator on over $8 million in federal, state, and corporate research grants. He holds a Ph.D. from the University of Texas at Austin and a B.S. from Iowa State, both in chemical engineering. Dr. Weinkoff is a native of Wisconsin and lives with his wife and three children in St. Paul, Minnesota. First, Dean Weinkoff, thank you so much for being here. We have a large audience for today's webinar, and they're all excited to hear from you. So with that, I will turn it over. Great. Thank you, Jenna. So as Jenna said, I want to just take a few minutes to both update uh, everyone out there on what's happening in the School of Engineering in terms of our growth, and, and then as well as I want to talk a little bit about the challenges of attracting the right kind of engineer uh, to come to the University of St. Thomas. So let's just kick off. I want to, don't want to read this for you, but uh, we, we have real true goals, and we've set these with our uh, Board of Governors, that we want to be a nationally recognized leader uh, in the undergraduate engineering experience for all those out there. We want to reflect the technical vitality and the entrepreneurial spirit of the businesses in this community. Of course, we want to hold fast to the mission of the University of St. Thomas. All of this has really has led to the fact that we've been recognized uh, uh, as one of the top 50 undergraduate engineering programs by U.S. News and World Report. Uh, just to give a summary snapshot of what the School of Engineering is, we actually have 10 master's programs with almost uh, uh, over 800 master's students participating, uh, and we have almost uh, 700 undergraduate students studying uh, in the School of Engineering, and you add that all up, one in seven students uh, at the University of St. Thomas is actually studying uh, in the School of Engineering. Just to give you a, an idea, a, sort of a pictorial idea of, of our growth, this is our graduating class from spring 2009. Uh, we all fit in the corner of the bins. Um, five years later, um, uh, we had to use a different venue for our class photo. Uh, here we have almost 80 graduates five years later. Uh, and this spring, uh, this May, we'll be graduating over or nearly 130 uh, undergraduate engineers uh, in, the, uh, in, in the spring commencement. Um, this, by the way, in, the, in the 2015 is the first uh, year that uh, mechanical engineering was selected as the number one major across campus for our incoming freshmen, and that's held true uh, in fall 2016, uh, and it looks like it's going to hold true again for fall 2017. And that's just our freshman class uh, from fall uh, 2015. Uh, big news announcement is that we are going to be launching a new civil engineering program. So our majors will expand from electrical, computer engineering, and mechanical engineering to now include civil engineering. And that program uh, will be starting uh, uh, this fall. And we're wrapping up in the final stages of hiring the faculty for that uh, new program. Now, uh, St. Thomas offers a different kind of engineering degree. And that is, in fact, we focus heavily on the liberal arts. And in fact, Engineers at St. Thomas take uh, the exact same core curriculum uh, as a philosophy major, as a Spanish major, or as a business major. And so all of our engineers graduate with a 100% uh, graduate with full courses in ethics and philosophy and theology, as well as uh, command, uh, at least a primary command of a second language, which is extremely unique for an engineer uh, in this country. Another unique aspect, is, which is characteristic of St. Thomas, is that 45% of our students have had some form of uh, study abroad experience while here at the University of St. Thomas. This is a very large number for uh, an engineer graduating in the U.S. Another unique aspect is, is that, uh, that people find is that actually 17% of our uh, graduating seniors have at some time during their, their tenure here at St. Thomas 
have uh, participated in Division Three athletics. A very unique uh, combination, and, and it brings a great deal of leadership characteristics uh, and leadership skills into the classroom, with one in six of our students uh, having participated uh, in athletics. About 80% of our students graduate uh, with uh, some form of tactical internship before they graduate. Really, that's a reflection of the vitality of the engineering and technical community here in the Twin Cities. Job opportunities are abundant, uh, and, the, and, as a, and I think we'll, we'll learn is that uh, uh, job opportunities for our St. Thomas engineers, even before they graduate, uh, is, is quite, quite strong. Uh, all of our seniors participate in our senior design clinic. Uh, this is a fantastic program which directly connects our uh, engineering uh, seniors with a company. Uh, right now we have 32 projects with industry, and I want to note to all of our listeners out there that um, uh, on Friday, May 5th at 2 o'clock, uh, these 30 projects with industry will be on display uh, in the Anderson Student Center. So, so put that on your calendars, uh, Friday, May 5th, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's going to be a big show, a lot of excitement. Uh, we're expecting hundreds of people to attend, and it's a great way to get a snapshot or a view of of what really happens uh, at the University of St. Thomas School of Engineering. Another sort of snapshot of our growth is this is our faculty back in 2010, just only seven years ago. Uh, here's our faculty uh, in fall 2016. So incredible growth, um, and these are fantastic people. In fact, if people ask me, what are you most proud of, of your accomplishments at the University of St. Thomas, without question, it's the faculty that we've assembled to serve and change and transform uh, the students, uh, our students, into uh, productive engineers that can truly make a difference uh, in the world. Um, advanced slide here. And for those of you who haven't been on campus for a while, and I often meet alumni who haven't seen the South Campus since 1997, but the engineering program is, is housed in the South Campus. Uh, in fact, uh, we uh, live in the O'Shaughnessy Science Hall. Uh, and we are bursting at the seams so much that the new campus master plan actually has a new science and engineering building planned for what is known uh, fondly uh, at, on St. Thomas campus as the M lot parking lot. So you'll see a new building in the coming years uh, to really accommodate our growth. So with all of our success, um, uh, fostering this different kind of engineering experience, combining liberal arts, practical hands-on education, um, it, it's a different type of engineering experience that you'll find at many colleges. But in turn, to, to feed that success, we're going to, to need a different type of student to uh, come to the University of St. Thomas. We truly want engineers who not, this, don't necessarily think exactly like a traditional or stereotypical engineer. We want that different type of student uh, because those are the engineers who are truly going to make a difference. And so what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the challenges uh, that we may have uh, in recruiting those students. So between 2000 and 2010, there was a large number of publications from the engineering community uh, that talked about the challenges in engineering education and how to uh, improve the number of students who are studying engineering uh, with changes in uh, uh, the composition of our uh, student high school pipeline. All of these needed to be addressed and also to to address the increasing complexity of the problems that uh, our engineers are going to be asked to solve. And if we look at just a summary of the consensus of what these reports all have listed, they say what we need in our new engineers, the 2020 engineers or the engineer of the future, is passion, creativity, multicultural awareness, business acumen, effective communication, leadership, adaptability, and understanding of the legal and market and the political landscape of the problems that engineers are solving. Well, if you look at this list and you compare it to a traditional engineering curriculum, you're not going to find much connection. So here we have this, this, this continuity where we have the engineering profession and, and corporate industry asking for these types of skills and the curriculum at the standard or a traditional chem, uh, engineering a program just simply can't match what the students uh, really are going to need. In fact, I'll get, give you one quote from uh, one of these uh, art, uh, uh, reports, and it's from uh, Jim Duderstadt, who has got his PhD from Caltech, and he's the former president of the University of Michigan. And he says, engineering programs should place less emphasis 
on technical training while stressing the far greater long-term value to the student and our society of a truly liberal education. Wow, that's fantastic because that's what we're trying to do here at the University of St. Thomas, to combine the incredible power of a practical engineering education, a high-tech engineering education, with the balance of a liberal arts education. That's what's going to create the engineer of the future that all of these reports are asking for. So how do we influence this unique pipeline of students to find engineering as a passion, uh, engineering as an appropriate connection to uh, who they are? Well, I just want to briefly talk about uh, a few barriers that stand in the way. And it turns out one of the barriers is the English language. Uh, to engineer, the verb, uh, actually, and the etymology of, of the word is actually derived from the Latin term, I'm going to get it right, I think, in, <laughs> ingeniare. Uh, and that is means to devise, uh, to design. Uh, and in fact, if those of you who speak Spanish out there, uh, it, you would call an engineer an ingeniero, directly connected to the Latin roots. Well, unfortunately, the English language has adopted the term engineer, which everyone in a, almost a false cognate attaches to the word engine. And we'll see some examples of that. If you take the noun ingenio in Espanol in Spanish, uh, you, it's, it means ingenuity or inventiveness or wit, and sometimes used as simply a device. And of course, in English, engine means a machine, a motor, a mechanism, or a train locomotive, unfortunately. And we'll see the results of what that means. There is a very interesting uh, bit of research uh, from the educational, uh, uh, educational researchers. Uh, and this test has been going on for a long time. In fact, it started in the 1920s where students were asked to draw a scientist at work. Well, uh, about uh, 20 or 30 years ago, uh, this was adapted uh, to now draw an engineer at work. And the results are fascinating. And this picture that I'm showing here is just from one research study done by Ganesh uh, in the, and published in the American Society of Engineering Education in 2011, which captures the thoughts of 10 to 13 year olds uh, on their impressions of engineers at work. And of course, they take the literal translation and they, of machine, motor, mechanism, locomotive, and they say, what do engineers do? Well, engineers fix engines, engineers, engineers fix trains, fix technical things, they build things, build bridges, and predominantly in these pictures when these tests are done with 10 to 13 year olds, the people are male, and guess what? They almost always are pictured working alone, which is quite different from when a student is asked to draw someone in the health profession or the legal profession. Uh, uh, these are quite different uh, examples. Um, so clearly a, a misguided or misunderstood profession, uh, engineering, is limiting the people who can, uh, or who are interested, at least in these very young ages, uh, in engineering, limited in scope. And what I wonder, if we, if in the English language, instead of using engineer, what if we, what if we called the profession or a, a person who is an engineer an ingenuiteer? And I think that would have, I think we would have a pathway beating to the engineering profession if we could just communicate that engineers aren't simply lone males fixing things. Engineers are actually ingenious, inventive, clever, and, and witty. This impression of what engineers do is compounded. This is the door that my son and daughter uh, walked by every day at St. Paul Public School System. Uh, and they walked right past this door. And we need to take a little closer look at what the door frame says. And that is that this door belongs to the custodian and this door belongs to the engineer uh, for the building. Engineers fix things. It's embedded in our mind. It's embedded in our language. And it distorts what the realities are in terms of what engineers actually do. The second barrier that I would like to talk about quickly here is what I call the engineer math science portal. It seems like every conversation that, that people have about uh, or which opens the door to engineering is they, is they have a conversation with an influencer, an adult, a guidance counselor, a parent, and they say, I noticed that you're pretty good at science and math. Did you ever think about being an engineer? Well, that's great, and science and math are extremely important, but it's not the only game in town. You need much more than science and math uh, to, become, uh, to become a successful engineer. Uh, and I, that 
by the way, that conversation is repeated at my table in my office, as shown here. Um, and that conversation goes something like this, because every student that I meet, I say, so why did you want to study engineering? And the parent sitting on the table on the right is thinking, wow, I really, it was really cool because he was always playing a Legos. And then the student says, well, I was good at science and math, and someone told me maybe I should be an engineer. And I want to tell you that this conversation captures about 95% of the students that I meet. 95%. Wow. There's got to be other ways to influence students to join the engineering uh, community. I want to just quickly t go back and look at a study that I was a, a participant in. And this is called the Cold Learning Styles Inventory. This is a map which is similar to Myers-Briggs. Uh, that identifies for educators what questions or how they should structure their classroom in order to uh, advance the student's interest and advance the student's learning. This is a, a, a plot of 70 plus chemical engineering students at a top 10 engineering school. Uh, and notice that all of the, or 95% of the respondents um, are placed in the lower quadrant. Now, what you might want to ask is, is well, what, what kinds of things uh, or, or what are the characteristics of a student who would uh, find himself located in these quadrants? Well, let's look at this. Well, the research would tell the, the instructor, the teacher who found identified a student in these quadrants, that students in these quadrants are not comfortable with ambiguity. They require detailed and organized information to learn. They want to model what has happened as opposed to explore something new, and they seek the right answer to a problem. They are not driven by why and what if, but how, when they're learning about new things. And this is the kicker. They are less concerned about the relationships among things or between things and people. Wow. This definition at the top of this slide is, is, is the stereotypic def, definition of an engineer. And 95% of the students in this study placed right into it. We need engineers who are comfortable with ambiguity. We need engineers who don't need organized information in order to solve problems, that they can grab uh, pieces of information from various different aspects of the problem space so that they can solve them. That's that system thinking that's required. And they also uh, uh, need to be concerned about the relationship between the things they design uh, and the people who will touch them. So going back to this conversation at my table where uh, it was a good, I was good at science and math and someone told me maybe I should be an engineer. I am waiting for the day when this conversation flips a bit. I'm waiting for it, the student to say, well, I won first place in an art contest and someone came up to me and told me maybe I should be an engineer. Or maybe the conversation could be, I was elected student council president and someone walked up to me and told me maybe I should be an engineer or I was selected to the varsity team captain of my football team or basketball team or lacrosse team, and maybe someone walked up to me and said, you should be an engineer. These are all important aspects. I want to emphasize that there's actually, we've known that engineers need far more than technical skills for a long time. In fact, there was a study done of 7,000 working engineers uh, who assigned a percentage of skills to succeed as an engineer in a range of possibilities. Uh, this study was conducted in 1916. Yes, that's over 100 years ago. And guess what? These 7,000 working engineers said that technical skills and technical knowledge accounted for only about 25% of their success. And then the real question that every student should ask is, well, what are the skills you need to be a successful engineer? So if a quarter of the skills are these STEM skills and STEM knowledge and practical hands-on education, the other 75% of the responses are, guess what? related to people, understanding people, motivating people, communicating with people. Uh, did I mention the word people? Engineering is a people-driven profession. We help people, we, we serve people, we uh, uh, need people to work together to solve very complex problems. It is all about people, people. So what, we, what is it, if it is about people, I just want to point out that there are distinguished there's very distinct form of education at St. Thomas. About 35% of the education of a St. Thomas engineer are in subjects outside of science, math, and engineering. 
If you compare that to other schools, it's 15% or less. And that's the distinction. If, the, if it truly takes people skills and communication skills uh, to be a functional and successful engineer, I want to ask, what percentage of your time are you spending on these extremely important topics? So here at St. Thomas, uh, all of our students have graduated with ABET accredited electrical and mechanical engineering degrees. Um, they have three semesters of a foreign language. They have full courses in philosophy, ethics, and theology. They've all worked on an industrial sponsored design team, and they've all had internships in the study abroad experience. This is truly a unique uh, uh, form or brand of engineering education that we uh, cherish and foster and, and thrive in. Uh, and the companies that surround us uh, in this effort truly appreciate the kinds of students that we're producing from this environment. So here's our growth. These are the students that we want to transform to be productive uh, uh, cit and contributing citizens in this community. And they will succeed at those various companies that we see and that, that truly support us and our work in this community. We are grateful for our industrial partners that are making all of this happen. And in that vein, what I want to do is also thank you, the alumni. Thanks for making this possible. We're doing something truly special, truly unique, uh, and we're building that right here in the state of Minnesota for this region. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and with that, I want to open it up uh, for questions, uh, and I'll turn it over to Jenna to help me out here, but it looks like we have a question here. Um, what are the job opportunities, employment, and the employment outlook for engineers from St. Thomas? Well, as I alluded to, um, we have uh, an, uh, a very good connections with industry. Uh, in fact, each fall, uh, we do a reverse engineering career fair where the students actually represent themselves at tables, uh, and the companies come and walk around. Uh, it's a unique brand, but just to let you know, we have about, uh, each year we have about 100 uh, engineering students participate in this, and we have over 100 uh, industry representatives uh, coming to interview our students. Uh, so job outlook is, is very strong, very good. Uh, and again, as I said, with this distinctive brand of engineering, uh, we have, um, uh, with this distinctive brand of engineering, I think we have a, a different kind of engineer that companies are interested in. All right. Uh, question came in. Uh, can you give us a sneak preview of a few of the senior design projects taking place this year? Well, yeah, we have about 30 projects. We have a range of, of industries from semiconductor to biomedical to uh, uh, startup companies interested in renewable energy. Uh, one of the projects that our students are, are working on is a, a, a equipment for polar fab semiconductor in terms of measuring. Uh, and and uh, we have a project with Stratasys, the 3D printing company here in town. Uh, several projects with 3M in terms of new devices for measuring flow. Um, uh, we have a project with the city, uh, Elk, uh, uh, Elk River, uh, where the students are actually making a remote picnic table with a charging station. So they're designing a system that will fit uh, under a picnic table uh, and allow people to charge remotely uh, out in the woods in the park. So there's lots of projects. Again, over 30, you'll be impressed with what the students are doing. And again, the whole idea, the whole culmination is that they have to bring this working prototype uh, into, um, uh, into uh, uh, to view. The second, we've got another question here. Um, can all students, even freshmen, do research at St. Thomas? The question, is, the answer is yes. And in fact, I, I'm not sure if I covered it, but you know, the University of St. Thomas doesn't have a PhD program in its engineering program. And the researchers, the faculty that we bring in, all come in from the top universities in the country, like MIT and Caltech and Cal Berkeley um, and University of Illinois, University of Minnesota. They come with very strong research backgrounds. And so the research that they do, uh, because we don't have PhD students, almost always involves undergraduate students. We do have a large master's program, but most of these students are uh, part-time uh, and come for uh, nighttime education. So almost all the research gets done by uh, undergraduate students, and yes. And so even as a freshman, uh, you're, you're, you're eligible and you should uh, make yourself known and, and walk right in and talk to some professors with some unique backgrounds and see if you can get involved. The next question uh, is, how do we start to change the belief that all engineers are males who work alone like the example <laughs> that you discussed. You know, we're talking about a, a giant movement. And I will say this, that certainly the, the drumbeat of STEM education in their K-12 through system has been pounding loud and clear for a long time. And I think we are seeing the benefits of that. We are seeing more women involved 
Uh, we are seeing, uh, 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 I could say, what a, an increasing societal value. But it's a slow, slow process. The needle moves on this very slowly. Um, and, that, and, and because of that, uh, we are talking about a grand problem. The reports that we saw from between 2000 and 2010 were addressing something very real. We need a different kind of engineering student, and that's why I think programs like St. Thomas offer a pathway or an opportunity uh, for a student to be interested in philosophy and uh, be interested in, in world travel and, and globalization and, and things like that that would really make um, a difference and maybe uh, uh, allow that pipeline uh, to expand to include um, uh, uh, both uh, ad advance the gender diversity as well as the racial diversity. And I also want to emphasize to you that part of my message about people, 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 people really is the key here. Many students choose their profession because they want to help people. They want to be influencing the lives of society and humanity, and, and in that, they want that more direct connection. So companies are working on that, uh, and we're working on that messaging, that engineering is about helping people. Uh, the next question we have here, um, are there any other ABET accredited private schools with engineering in Minnesota? Not to my knowledge. So we're, I think the closest uh, private institution with accredited engineering degrees would be uh, the University of Marquette, or Marquette University. All right, another question, great. So what work backgrounds do the, professions, uh, do the professors in engineering have? What organizations have they worked for? Well, that's a very unique part of, of St. Thomas because we really focus on that practical um, side of engineering, what it takes to really get work done. I would say about 50% of our faculty uh, uh, come and arrive uh, with a significant work experience, five years plus in the industry. Uh, so our faculty have worked for 3M, Medtronic, Honeywell, uh, Shell Oil Company like myself. We have another uh, faculty member who's worked for Shell. Um, again, a diverse uh, construction companies with our civil engineering uh, faculty coming in. So yes, a wide range of industrial background, um, Seagate. Uh, so again, a lot of companies in the region, uh, and um, so uh, we... Uh, are grateful for that, uh, and they have uh, supplied us with some great faculty and faculty experiences that I think are, are also distinctive about the University of St. Thomas. And I guess that's it. I want to thank you for attending. I want to thank you for your time, and I thank you for your interest in, in the University of St. Thomas School of Engineering. Um, if you at any time want to visit, we'd be happy to give you a tour. Stop by, uh, and uh, we'll make that happen because there's a lot of excitement around the School of Engineering and what's happening uh, on the South Campus.